Just an outpour of emotion from rugby league people of both sides of the border. Paul, you knew him well. Mm. Let me start off. I wanted to ask you about this. He obviously has a, a close association with John Singleton. Can you talk me through, question on the spot, how he come to go from West to Newtown? Obviously, Singo played a part in that, but still it would seem to be a big move back in that time. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of versions. I don't know whether I should tell all the versions. Uh, the, look, Newtown were a team coming through at the time. They, they, they thought they had young kids uh, who were going to be something one day, and they thought they had the, the, the skeletons of a pretty good team, but they really lacked leadership. Warren Ryan was in his first stint as a head coach and obviously was making waves there, uh, was teaching a, a, a game of rugby league that is now the blueprint for the way every team plays. Uh, but back then it was revolutionary and, and he was having a lot of success with unfashionable teams because, because of his great coaching. But the one thing that hadn't been really impressed upon the players was how to win. That, 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 that They gave up a little bit at different times. They didn't know how to win the... So, so Tommy was identified as West were breaking up where Manly came in and, and ravaged them, taking Dorothy and Donnelly and uh, Dorothy and uh, uh, Boyd. Les Boyd and uh, there's one more thing, Ray Brown. Brown went. So three of them went. Uh, so th- that the West were breaking up. So Singo, um, Singo I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story. Look, Singo uh, was interested in getting Tommy over. He was a benefactor of the club. So Steve Bowden, who was at the club, uh, spoke and they organised to get Tommy over for a meeting to sit down and say, OK, uh, we want you to come and play for us. So Tommy was asked to come around to Singo's house and um, the way it was told to me is Singo was married to Belinda Green at the time, who's Miss Australia, literally was Miss Australia. And she's answered the phone, uh, the door in this little green slip of a thing. Mm. And after that, it was sold. Tommy right. was coming to Newtown. <laughs> that was so they took him through to the room, you know, back of the house and sat down and sing Owen and Steve Bowden convinced him to, to come to Newtown. And I wrote this story yesterday, which I hadn't heard before, uh, which was in his early start at, at Newtown, um, uh, four games in, they're playing Parramatta and Parramatta, Ray Price and Arthur Beetson, uh, Mick Cronin, Jeff Gerrard, Ron Hildich, all played for Australia. Um, Sterling was in the side. He was in his first full season. Eric Groth was in the side. Yeah, they'd still yet to play for Australia, but obviously we're going to go and have great careers. And Tommy was there at, at, uh, for the Jets as the only Australian player in the team at the time. Uh, they had a couple of blokes who had done a little bit of rep football here and there, but but they weren't, they weren't a big side. And, and what happened was at halftime, uh, Tommy had this big uh, gash in the top of his head and, and the blood was coming out of it that, that quickly. It was bubbling out of his head and it's, it's spilling down. It's matting up his hair and spilling down his face. And once they got in the, the dressing room, Paramount, I think, were leading 12-9 at the time. They got in the dressing room and the doctors come over with the needle and the, 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 um, the, the sewing kit to try and sew it up and try and stop it bleeding. And Tommy pushed him away and told him, you know, in Tommy's words, leave me alone. Um, doctor's gone in again and he said, leave me alone. At that point, when Warren Ryan's addressing the team, Tommy's got up and walked to the middle of the room. This is four games into his Newtown career. And he's, he's looked at this, he's interrupted Warren Ryan and he said, bleed with me. He said, let's go out and show these bastards what we can do. Bleed with me. And he's, he smeared the blood over himself and, and made a bit of a show of it. But that was, that resonated with the team because the one thing that about Tommy, he was, he was authentic to who he was. And, and everybody has said this about Tommy. He, he never, he never asked you to do something he wouldn't do. And here he was in the middle of the room showing that he didn't care about the blood, that he wanted them to get out and put a bit of skin in the game as well. So Newtown went out that day and they won the game, I think it was 17-14. And from that moment, Newtown started to figure it out. And, and, and the story that's been told a lot was at that time, uh, Johnny Lewis asked Tommy to, uh, Warren Ryan to lay off Tommy because the Wok had this habit of falling out with his playmakers throughout his career. At Newtown, it was Tommy Rodonigas. And, and he said, you've got to lay off Tommy because and, and, and Johnny knew how important Tommy was to the playing group. And Warren got the shits and said, listen, he said, every time we lose, it's Ryan. And every time we win, it's Rodonigas. And Johnny said, yeah, Warren, but yeah, you only taught him how to play football. Tommy taught him how to win. Mm. And there's a, there, there is a difference in the game about that. And 
So that, that was the beginning, in many ways, of the legend of Tommy. Yeah, of a part of the legend of Tommy, I should say, because he was already well established by that stage with his career at Western Suburbs. But that sort of kicked into the next part of his career. And Tommy just became this endearing figure through that. And, and everybody that you talk to who don't, knows Tommy or knows a little bit, bit about Tommy can tell you stories. And, and, and some of them I've heard for a lot of years. And it's very hard finding new stories. But... But the game meant so much to Tommy. Laurie Dale was saying the other night that when he was coaching New South Wales, they'd have a train and run, they'd finish, they'd do all they had to do, and Tommy would then finish up, and they'd all go back to their rooms. And Tommy would get the form guide, and he'd go down to the pub to watch the races for the afternoon. He'd say, I can't believe I'm getting paid to do this. Mm. He, he just loved it so much. And then during the Super League War, and this is, I've never, I've never heard th this story told uh, by anyone before, but during the Super League War, they were doing all the loyalty payments and everybody was lining up to go in and get their check. And eventually they called Tommy and he was coaching Western Suburbs. They called him in and they said, mate, we've got something for you. And he said, what's that? And they had a check. Now, the person told me he couldn't remember whether it was for 200000 or $300,000. It was one or the other. And they, they said, mate, take this. He said, what's that? They said, it's a check for a loyalty payment. He said, I don't want it. And they said, mate, you don't have to do anything different. You just take the check and put it in your bank. Mm. Like it, it, it didn't change any circumstance of his employment. Or, he said, mate, I do this job for nothing. And they said, yeah, we get that. But, but you, we're not asking you to do anything for the check either. Just take the check and put it in your bank. He said, no, I'm, I don't want it. I do it for nothing. I love coaching the kids. This is what I'm about. I don't want the money. So he knocked it back. Amazing. He's the only bloke in the game that knocked it back. Everybody else was holding out for more. Mm. Some, some went back for seconds. Yeah. And here's Tommy. And that's how genuine he was. When he said he would, he would do it for nothing, he, he did it for nothing. He was, the, he was on bugger all at West Tiger, at West, uh, Western Suburbs when he was coaching there. Like they, they couldn't, one of the, the attractions for them to have him as coach was he was willing to do it for six buttons. He didn't want a bit, lot of money there. They couldn't afford it. They were, they were going broke at the time, which mm. is why they had to amalgamate with the Tigers during after the Super League War. And, and, and that's the authenticity of the guy that I th we almost take for granted, but we just assume that everybody's got that. But he actually lived it. Most of us think we'd like to do something for nothing. Mm. But if someone put a check here to for 200 grand to go and do exactly the same thing. Like, look at you, Anthony. You're starting to oh, flick nah, your lips. No, I'll, I'll be honest, right? mate. I, I wouldn't do it for nothing, no. If somebody offered yeah. me 300, I'd take it. Yeah. And, but that, and that's him. And, and there's so many stories about that, that, that he does. Like, yeah, he tells the story about the time when he was a baby. And he got the, his mum put him to bed one night and, and his father said, what's wrong with, with Tommy? And she said, I don't know. He said, he's, he's hungry. He said, she's, cause he was crying and whinging and he said, he's hungry. And she said, no, he's just been fed. Anyway, he cried and whinged all night. And then, um, finally when they went and checked on him, cause he wouldn't stop complaining and well, wouldn't stop crying. They found that his mother had put the nappy on in the dark and she put the needle straight through his skin. Ooh. So that's why he's crying. But, but. The bit about that that I love is Tommy says, and he's a baby, he says, I like to think that's the last time I ever cried through pain. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you because know, he was just, he was authentically tough. And, and, and more than he was tough, he was fearless. That's, yeah, that's the thing I think gets overlooked. He didn't care who you were, how big you were. He's he, he like yeah. the little chihuahua in a fight. He, he didn't see he size. He had no mirrors at his place. No, he it, did not it, see size. Like that, that, you know, like all the footage that come up, like Ray Price. They said that he was Parramatta's gauge. When he left, they didn't win any more comps, and I've heard you talk about that before. He's the one that started fighting Tommy. He's the one that went after, and he knew well, that he had to get Tommy. And Tommy just gets on the ground, and he just starts laying into him. And Ray Price went backwards a little bit. That's how, like, that's how tough Tommy is, you know. And, and, the great and Tommy, I don't know all the stories, but I just know Origin because of him and Arthur. Mm. I think Tommy is loved by Queenslanders, and that's very, very. I think it's difficult how we build up this hatred and it's state versus state, mate, uh, mate, mate versus mate. But Tommy is loved by Queenslanders. And I don't know whether it's because he came up here and he coached Ipswich um, or whatever, but, you know, wherever Tommy would be in Queensland, you know, uh, he'd get a great, great reception. Because he was genuine, Gordon. Yeah. yeah. And he, Tommy was the sort of guy you'd sit and have a, uh, a beer with. And if you liked the company, 
it didn't matter who was in the group. And I, I'll say this yeah. respectfully, but often you, I remember being out one night, I'll, I'll say, say this quickly, but Tommy and a few, uh, a few of the uh, media guys from 2GB where his work at the time, whatnot, he got a phone call from an ex New South Wales player who he knew, oh mate, what are you doing? They're all out having a beer, uh, wherever they were else, elsewhere in Brisbane. It was the night before an origin game. And people were going, the Blues were going, where's Tommy getting me, getting me? And now he was across town at another pub with us. And he sat and listened. He said, yeah, right. And he said, no, what, mate, I'm here with some pretty good blokes. So I might just stay here. Mm. Most ex-players would be out like yeah, a scalded yeah. cat. Mm. You know what I mean? Leave, leave, <laughs> leave the journeys behind and go, on, yeah. yeah. But he was happy in the company he was at because the airs and graces and all that rubbish that a lot of people find important, he really didn't care about. He, you know, he, he, all he cared about was were you a good bloke or not. 